expect to lose some friends. See, if you want to make a difference, you yourself must be different. You have to become something new. You have to become someone new. And in a world where people find comfort and complacency, you'll find that many of the people you thought had your back through thick and thin, just bear with them. See, these, these are the people who, you know, when everything's going good, everything is running smooth, or oh, they with you. your main man, 50 grand, right by your side, no matter what. But when you need them to go out on a limb with you, or you need them to go out on a limb for you, ironically, they have their own personal emergency or crisis going on right, right then and there at that exact time. Raise your hand if you know somebody like that. Now, see, if your hand isn't up, you probably know. Ah. I'm talking about belief. It was only about maybe it was 2013, about maybe seven years ago, I gave my first professional speech. And I love this story. I gave my first professional speech, not in some grand ballroom somewhere, not in front of some big corporation or some room full of. I gave my first professional speech. At Our Lady Health Christian School, East Orange, New Jersey, mm -hmm. to the eighth grade graduate ceremonial class. And that's, that happens to be the school where I attended as a kid. Now, the principal there, her name is Sister Patricia Hope. And she was the same principal, she is the same principal I had when I started going there in fourth grade. And she is there to this very day. When I made the decision to become a speaker, and I asked her if I could address the class. I told her there's no way I could possibly, I, I can't charge you, there's, there's no way, you know. And so she's fine, no problem, she gave me a shot. She only asked one thing of me, she asked me that in my speech, in my message, I, in my speech I incorporate the message that with God all things are possible. Cool, no problem, I'm living proof of that. So wrote my speech, practiced my speech, rehearsed my speech, Stood up in front of about 30 graduates, 250 of their family and friends. I was on fire, I'm gonna tell you the truth. I was on fire. <laughs> I, was on, I was nervous as all get out, but I was on fire. Yeah, ain't, ain't nobody seen it, I was nervous, but I was on fire. By the time I was done, Sister Patricia was in tears. The eighth grade teacher, her name is Miss G. Well, was, her name used to be Morton. Brutus. Now, Miss Jean Brutus, I ain't make that up, that's the man she married. Miss <laughs> Brutus. Miss Jean Brutus, she was in tears. She started her career as my fifth grade teacher. My class in the fifth grade was her first class, her first job out of teaching school. I mean, out, of, out of school. And now she's the eighth grade teacher at school. She's been there. She's also been there all these years as well. She was in tears. I stand in ovation. I, I, I'm, I'm on fire. Boy, you can't. <laughs> Can't tell me nothing about myself right now, okay? And so, and, and then before I left, the, uh, the, the the principal secretary, she gives me a thank you card, a little bit of so I put it in pocket, and I go home, so I'm happy. And my wife said, how'd you do? I, I was on fire, man. You, you, boy, you, my, my father-in-law came with me, he videotaped me, so I got to guess, I didn't do dad do the video. You go, yeah, <laughs> you gonna see, I was smoking, all right? And so, you know, I put it in my pocket, put my suit in, oh, and they gave me a thank you card. $150 cash inside the bank. Uh -huh. Oh, I could oh, you could. I grew an extra three inches. <laughs> you know, and uh, I was I was very excited, I was very happy. The numbers started rolling in my head. I'm like, yo, I was only speaking, I only spoke for about 25 minutes. It was like 150 minutes. You multiply 25 times, I can I get an eight. Somewhere around $450 an hour about that. You know, I, I start charging some money right about now. You know, so I, I, I called up one of my closest relatives and I say to her, I say, I did. I'm a professional speaker. I just gave my first real speech. I was on fire. You, you don't understand. When the people was clapping and they were laughing, when it was funny and, you know, and it wasn't like that. And she said, well, you know, it wasn't like congratulations. What a good job. The first thing I don't know, you know, you ain't a professional until you get paid. <laughs> Hello. 
I didn't even get to that part of the story. I'm building the story. I, 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 yeah. Talk about not taking the wings out of the wind out of my sail. Clipping the wings and pull. Yeah. Just, so needless to say, I got off the phone with her behind quick. Remember what I said earlier about stinking thinking. You have to have zero tolerance for stinking thinking. You cannot tolerate it from yourself. You cannot tolerate it from the people around you. You see, when you're on the path of making a difference, you have to realize that everyone that came with you this far might not be able to go with you the rest of your life. People are going to talk about you, most of them not to your face. They're going to say things like, you done changed. You're right. I have. Be that way. Now, what I tend to say is making a difference is all about change. Change is good. You should feel good when you make a change, especially within yourself. You should feel good when you make a change from you you can shop at Victoria's Secret instead of shopping at Lane Bryant. You should feel good when you take your suits to get taken in instead of being let out. You should feel good when you go to the bank, deposit that check from the promotion or the new job that's paying more than what you were previously doing. These are all changes. These are all differences you are making within yourself. But you can't do these things if you don't believe in yourself. Going on with this, if you want to make a difference, you're going to have to have a larger vision for yourself. You're going to have to have a larger vision for yourself. See, not everyone's going to share in that vision. As Les Brown says, and, and I had to tell you, because you know me very well, Ray will tell you, you know me very well. Les Brown is like, who am I here? And as Les Brown always says, if people can't have a larger vision for themselves, how can they possibly have a larger vision for you? You're going to have to change your circle of influence. There was Dr. Dennis Kimbrough who said, if you are the smartest person in your circle, you need a new circle. To that I add, if you are the wealthiest or richest and you have the most money person in your circle, you need a new circle. If you're the, if you're the healthiest person in your circle, you need a new circle. We need to be around people who are going to challenge us to improve ourselves. Okay? So I, I tell people, because I don't have this problem with anybody in this room I can see, but I always tell people, hey, look, if your idea or your goal is to lose weight and you can't hang out with everybody who wants to eat all the wings at the Super Bowl party. If you want to quit smoking, you can't hang out with the people that go out 15 minutes out of every hour of the day, no matter what the weather is, to go outside and get that pull. You can't hang with them. <laughs> now, I happen to have an older fraternity brother who I haven't seen him in years. It kind of hurts, but I understand why I don't see him. I don't see him because back in the day, he used to be really heavy into drugs. And when he was doing the drugs, it happened to be when he was around the brothers a lot of the time. So it's kind of like now that he's been able to get himself sober for quite a few years now, he's pretty much made, well not so much made, let's just say that he sees it as a trick. It reminds him of a lifestyle he's been able to rid himself of. No, no. Um, but the fact of the matter is, I I I can understand where he's coming from, and, and and I respect I respect his sobriety, and I I applaud his sobriety, and I respect his absence. You know, um, in the book Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill writes about mastermind groups. Now, a mastermind group is a group with four, five, six, seven, ten people. The, any number of people, any number of people in a group, but they, they, they have a common bond. They have, they, there's something that they collectively are trying to accomplish in some form or another. People in this room will figure. But if everybody in this room exchanged phone numbers and you know you guys okay, yeah, this is what we're gonna do, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about fitness, we're gonna know how different ways we can improve ourselves, how many different ways we improve the lives of our clients, and what can, what can I learn from you that I can teach him, or so on and so forth. These are the things that happen in a mastermind group. But notice, when you're dealing with people in a mastermind group, everybody's at a different stage or level of growth. So everybody can learn from one another. Okay? 
there's a saying that goes, show me who you're with, and I'll show you who you are. Jim Rome, who's another heavyweight in, in, in the motivational speaking industry, the personal development industry, uh, he said, we are the sum, we are the average sum of the five people we spend the most time with. Now, some people have to go back home and think about <laughs> well, I just spent a lot of time with Pookie. <laughs> and Shaquan, I might have to admit, sometimes you, you're going to have to change your circle of influence. When I became a cop, there was, there was a lot of places I couldn't go anymore. There's, hey, sometimes I'd be at a party, and if I just happen to smell yeah. a particular plant <laughs> being burnt, but nobody was cooking in the kitchen. I have to leave. <laughs> Certain guys I couldn't, you know, even be around anymore. Just get, but I was making a difference in my life. And when you make a difference in your life, expect to lose some friends. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and hurt people's feelings. I'm not telling you to go out and be like, I can't beat you. <laughs> <laughs> you think you had it. No. I'm not telling you to, 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 to like, be a jerk. I would say that your your fair weather friends will come at you. Where you been? Yeah, maybe yeah, the people that actually are your true friends will say, "Where you been?" And, and what I would say to, to you to tell them is just say, "You know what? I've been working on some things." Fair weather friends will go back. Oh, you ain't changed. You ain't you ain't special. You're be working on some things. Okay. Most people, when it comes to those type of things, you have those other friends, uh, haters or whatever, right? Just because they don't understand what you're doing. Absolutely, and, and I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. Funny thing is, again, when I say that people talk about you change, you acting like you don't have time for us anymore. The fact of the matter is, if you're really out there trying to make a difference in yourself, you're not acting. You really don't have time. I really don't have time for you. But see, like I said, you don't want to be a jerk. Now see, here's the thing, and, and I'll probably say this again in a minute or so. If you haven't noticed by now, I'm very direct style of people. The people in this room, the three people in this room who know me, Dave's known me the longest, they tell you, I don't mince words. <laughs> you know, I, I can be very direct. So for me to actually say, you don't want to go out and hurt somebody's feelings, or you don't want to be a jerk, my wife would be proud of me. <laughs> oh, I, oh, I be very proud. I've watched you shut it down. <laughs> exactly. Can I ask you a question? Certainly, there's no question. You have a lot of friends? No. And again, I block. Because. But you speak your mind. The word friend. That's a big word. I, I, I think, as much as it, it, everybody in here tell you, I live on Facebook. But I think. Mark Zuckerberg, maybe indirectly, unintentionally, has seriously devalued the word friend. Thank you. Very good. Um, but I have a few friends for the sitting in this room. Like I said, you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but if you are actively making a difference in yourself and working towards making a difference in yourself, those who are true to you will understand, those who are not, who aren't true to you, if they're not true friends, you never had them, and you can't miss what you never had. Very good. I'll say the same thing. Well, just that's the